and uh, Van Ness are, are different streets. Yeah. And one of the things that causes that to be problematic is, um, you know, Van Ness is wider than Gary. Yeah, okay. um, so, you know, having center boarding islands and center running islands uh, doesn't really make as much sense when you would need to have p pedestrians, you know, cross, you know, multiple lanes of traffic to get to a center running bus. But then, um, then also the bicycle lanes could be, like, could connected to the, uh, to the bus lane down the center. And then they would be able to turn off at whatever block they want to turn off. But, but that's just fine. Yeah, so again, um, uh, we we are, you know, um, you know, the designs for the street are not done yet. Yeah. Um, however, um, you know, there, there are some things that we can do with the width of the street, and there's some things that we can't do with the width of the street. Um, and so, you know, the engineers are trying to design the best system they can with the width of the street and, um, you know, that, the constraints that that presents as far as um, Coming along here probably in about a year is a building construction of 450 O'Farrell. Okay. It's 120, 130 units of housing at the Fifth Christ Science Church. Right. And there's a large concern by the residents of the area around here that their, their construction is going to throw a massive amount of vehicular traffic onto O'Farrell Street and its surrounding streets. And is that because there's going to be residents there? Is that your or is that there's no, construction? There's no residents there. It's a church. No, no. What I'm saying is, is your concern that the construction will impact transit? It's not or? so much the construction. It's the after effect because right now, with the Mark Lane on the Taylor to Jones block, there's only one traffic lane, except during rush hour. And how is MTA planning to deal with 176 more cars daily going in and out of this project on Shannon Alley uh, to deal with the Fury uh, BRT? And it, just now, so. Uh, well, I would say a couple things. One, um, you know, the presentation that was here, I, I saw the same presentation you saw the last time I was here, um, which was in January. Um, and my understanding is they're, uh, you know, not including that many parking spaces um, based on the presentation that they just gave here. Um, secondly, I uh, don't, you know, the, their project hasn't been approved by planning or any of those, I, I, any I, I of those real, kinds of I things. That. So, you know, I, 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 I can't but really comment the, on something the, that hasn't the, been gone through. The environmental documents available show approximately 85 parking spaces. That's 85 more cars going up and down Shannon Alley trying to get off of O'Farrell and onto O'Farrell with one traffic lane. So, you know, again, so I, my, no, I my, my question is, is it being planned in here, in this plan, to deal with housing construction down the road? Because based upon your planning, you two both of you could be building at the same time. So, uh, so but again, also you, know, I, you know, there, there might be, you know, a, a ton of housing that is built in this neighborhood over the next, you know, you know, between now and 2020. Um, we can't plan for things that aren't approved, that aren't approved and aren't, you know, a part of the, you know, the landscape yet. Um, you know, there, there's, there's already in 2010 there has already been 1,500 units in the pipeline and the tenor line. I, I understand that, but like, and there's going to be a lot more you know, soft sites in the neighborhood that are planning uh, to go in. So you right. know, it has the cumulative effect whether it's on the on a particular street. Or so, so around and around looking for park. Right. Again, you know, uh, we know that there are more people that are living in San Francisco. We know that there are more people living in the Tenderloin. We know that um, there will be additional building. Um, you know, and uh, so what we're trying to do for this neighborhood and for other neighborhoods is provide, um, you know, safe, efficient, um, reliable transit service so that those additional people. You know, don't have to own cars and can take transit. Well, we see that the owning cars is it uh, going to end because uh, most of them are going to be staying from work in San Francisco. 
So, um, cars are going to be here. <laughs> no, we're, we're again, we're what uh, the. San Francisco in 1973 adopted a transit first policy which encourages um, you know, uh, people to uh, take public transit, walk, other active forms of transportation, uh, bicycle included. Uh, we are trying to, uh, one of the reasons why we are providing uh, transit only lanes is so that you, uh, so that the people that you choose to take public transportation are not slowed by the um, you know influx of new vehicles, um, you know in uh, non-transit only lanes. So is Uber uh, can't Uber and, and, and Lyft use that red line that that that, that red uh, uh, lane? They're not supposed they, to. Oh, it's, my, it's, my, it's my knowledge. Oh. Um, you know we. So the, we do not regulate Uber and Lyft. Uh, we attempted to regulate Uber and Lyft, and the California Public Utilities Commission um, said that we did not have jurisdiction to regulate Uber and Lyft, and that the California Public U Utilities Commission um, had uh, regu uh, jurisdiction because Lyft does not operate solely within the uh, balance of San Francisco. Uh, you can take a Lyft outside of San Francisco um, or Uber. Uh, you know, a, a, what we call a, a transportation network company, or what they call a transportation network company. So, um, so basically, in January, um, you know, uh, the San Francisco County Transportation Board, uh, which is uh, the, mem the members of the Board of Supervisors, um, unanimously approved the Gary BRT project um, and the final in uh, environmental impact review. Um, uh, which basically um, uh, means that the uh, the San Francisco Municipal Trans uh, Protection Authority Board and the uh, FTA are going to sign off on the environmental reviews, uh, and then we're going to start conducting uh, community outreach and feedback on the detailed design. So um, you know. Uh, now that we have an environmental review and it's environmentally clear, we're going to start doing detailed design. Um, Liz Bryson is running this project, and she has committed to me that she will um, do some outreach to you guys when they start doing outreach um, in the summer and fall. Um, as you can see on the back of this, uh, it kind of shows uh, where the project boundaries are and um, some things that are proposed. Um, some of the proposed changes. Like I said, there will be additional public outreach around this um, coming up uh, this summer and this fall. Uh, and you know, they will have meetings where you can um, you know, come express concerns about the number of people that um, are going to be living at the uh, former well, Christian Science reason, Church. The reason um, or, I brought it up for a reason, because EIRs do traffic flows but they do traffic flows based on existing uh, traffic designs. And my concern is uh, that we're, we're adding incrementally parking to a city with a transit, pro transit policy. And it, it's the policy of the city, basically, that um, uh, every building have a parking garage with cars. And it it is an action policy. Well, it, it seems to me because I've got plans for almost 20 buildings, and they all have parking garages. I mean, so, so whether, I mean, whether it's a there, policy there are, of the city are, or whether there, it's a there are some that don't. Parking. But the reason they don't have a garage is they can't put a garage <laughs> in. It's, it's not economically feasible. So, Marvin, so um, the reason I'm making up making the the congestion is um, when planning does traffic reviews involving the MTA, is there any way that maybe you could suggest to powers of need that they look at the, the uh, future possibility, especially when they know there's a plan out there, um, to project uh, perspective traffic problems down the road so you don't have to deal with them afterwards? So, so Mormon, um, San Francisco as a city, and this is the planning department, so I'm going to you know, only comment on this briefly, but San Francisco as a city has no parking minimums. So you know, what parking is built is built by developers. You know, we don't get to make that determination. 
Um, if you if you are concerned about the amount of parking that's being added incrementally, I encourage you to um, you know go talk to the planning department when I do it every time I say email. Right, but, 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 but I, I you know as so you know again I'm a public information officer for the SFMTA. I'm I don't work for planning, so I can't you know. Well, I'm not I'm not talking about planning. I'm talking about because MTA is part of the planning process because planning asks MTA work on a traffic study. And so to, when you're working on that, all I'm asking is can you make a suggestion that when working on traffic studies on transit corridors, for an example, Geary Street, that you look at trans, tra traffic patterns projected for when the building gets built. And cumulative projects, because this is something that doesn't happen, something Jane Kim's office might look into, is planning for cumulative projects and how cumulative projects impact the neighborhood, especially MTA projects like Gary Street along the Gary Transit Corridor. So, um, Margaret, I will take that under uh, advisement and tell people above me that uh, you are concerned about uh, the lack of foresight in uh, planning, with, in coordination with planning. Also, no, we are along with him. <laughs> so, and and uh, that's why. Yeah, we, we actually had, just for your information now, we did have a, an actual meeting of over 20 people specifically concerned about uh, the project on uh, that 450 field And these were just some of the issues that came up. One was <laughs> traffic uh, uh, So are you talking about the last meeting? No, 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 no. Okay, so this is a separate special meeting. meeting. We, we special <laughs> meetings. That's what we have committees now to deal with. And so uh, it, was, it was actually a closed meeting to because see, we, when you we come to our meetings, I, I'm not sure. I think people don't pay attention when they come to our meeting. You look at her, uh, the thing, it says, okay. these are all our sponsors. Right. These are all different organizations. It's not just the alliance that's co-sponsoring this meeting. No, I'm just letting you know. And so um, we have other functions and stuff that we do. So anyway, I just wanted to. Okay. So anyway. Um, so, I, you know, again, I encourage you to, uh, you know, take any concerns you have with parking and additional cars, um, you know, in, in garages and additional, um, you know, concerns with additional um, residents in the area to the planning department. Um, so, I'm going to uh, talk briefly. Um, so uh, I think that that kind of concludes uh, these two projects. Um, I'm going to talk briefly about um, a couple of other projects. Um, first, uh, we're going to talk about the Eddy Street uh, Traffic Calming Improvement Project. So the Eddy Street Project, um, as uh, many of you know, um, uh, Michael knows especially because uh, he was on the uh, Little Saigon uh, Tenderloin Community Transportation Study uh, Transportation Study about 10 years ago. Um, Eddy Street has been slated uh, to be two-wayed um, at the recommendation of the community um, 10 years ago um, with the uh, the uh, Little Saigon uh, Tenderloin plan. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I was going to ask my opinion about that 10 years ago or otherwise. So you can't say that it was done by all the Yeah, that's a quite yeah. an overstatement. So, okay. by the, so, 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 the, 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 the San Francisco County Transportation Authority um, impaneled a uh, you know community advisory committee. There was no agency from this organization no. to do that. Michael was on the well, committee. Yeah, so no, I'm, no, just, no, I'm just, no, I'm, I'm just no, saying, no, look. It Again, came to pass because the Board of Supervisors passed it. You can say that. Yeah. Okay. So, again, um, in 2007, the the neighbor the you know the neighborhood committee. Um, you know, the committee, city council. Uh, I sit daily. Okay, okay guys, uh, you know, I, I, I come I come to your meetings Don't to try to you know I come I try, try to you guys are interrupting. Nice. Be nice. Let me, let me clarify you know, for you so everybody can understand. If, if there were four there were four people that were dealing with the uh, removal of the four bus stops uh, the bus stop stops along Geary and O'Farrell when they were trying to start the BRT, and that's what I was involved in. 
And because uh, we had to organize the community to stop the removal of the, many of the bus stops because they were not they were in the center of our neighborhood, and we were able to only get four removed, and those four. Uh, and after that, City Hall said, well, there must be a need for more community planning for this neighborhood for transit. And that's when it revolved into the uh, Little Saigon. But before that, there was no planning, there was no nothing. There was four, it was two residents and two uh, service providers, a total of four. That's not really an much of a committee, it was just the people that were head, head the campaign to stop MTA from planning this neighborhood without community input. That's what I was so, on. So it was not a committee, it wasn't getting, I wasn't getting paid, I wasn't whatever. And later, later the uh, Little Saigon, the city gave $25,000 to the Tenderloin Housing Clinic to do the study. And the study went to its own route of planning processes, and that's how it came about. Exactly. So, just to okay. So, so anyway, like you know, you know, ten. I, look, you know, right. ten years ago there was this process. It involved community input. Obviously, not everybody in the community, you know, gave input on this project. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that live here now that didn't live here ten years ago. There's some people that didn't go to meetings. Um, you know, there's not everybody you know, is going to comment on every project. So in 2012, um, uh, Eddie between Larkin Leavenworth and Ellis between Polk and Jones were converted to allow car travel in both directions. And a signal was added um, at Leavenworth um, and Eddie. So, um, you know, basically Eddie between uh, Leavenworth and uh, Mason is going to be converted from one way to two way. Um, so, uh, you know, basically it's going to change the layout. Uh, we, uh, there is going to be a public hearing for the matter on uh, June 2nd um, at uh, City Hall Room 415, uh, which is hearing room 4, uh, at 10 a.m. Um, so that public hearing um, gives you an opportunity if you feel like your voice was heard in this planning process to go let your voice be heard um, now. Uh, basically, uh, we have been doing outreach to SROs um, and businesses uh, along uh, Eddie and um, uh, you know, and we uh, and, and people have expressed you know, and uh, providers and SROs have expressed support for the two-way. Um, you know, so you know, if you support the project. I encourage you to go to the public uh, you know, meeting. If you oppose the project, I encourage you to go to the public hearing. Um, once again, City Hall, room 415, uh, June 2nd uh, at 10 a.m. So uh, it's you know coming up. Uh, I encourage you to uh, go. Um, can I if along, if along that issue because it was a joint project? It was going to be the two-way with Elvis and Henny. Yeah. And so, for some reason, Alice so, was off the table. So again, I can talk about that for, first, but you have it on your agenda is, is separate things. So I'm gonna, you know, when oh, you email right. me, that's so okay. I, 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 I'm gonna talk about Eddie and then I can move on to Alice. Does that work? Oh, for you? that's fine. It's just that it's on the same page. So. Right. So uh, we have uh, heard uh, concerns um, with uh, Alice. Uh, based on uh, what Glide and some of the other, uh, you know, folks on Ellis Street have told us um, is, uh, you know, they have concerns about two-waying the street. Uh, we also are taking the opportunity, uh, which is kind of a separate item on this agenda, um, on our Taylor Street project, um, which uh, intersects with Ellis um, and, you know, many of the issues on Ellis happen at Taylor Street. So this project uh, we'll be examining issues um, in coupling with Ellis. Um, so there's going to be, um, you know, inclusive outreach this summer um, for the uh, for the Taylor Street project, um, which uh, you know has not been planned yet. Um, exactly what's happening, but there will be outreach this summer. And uh, in the meantime, uh, it, that will uh, you know examine issues with Ellis Street as well. So that knocks off um, uh, two of the uh, agenda items here, and then I have one more thing uh, to do, which is good because I, I have to leave at 7.30 on the dot. Um, so, Sixth uh, six Street Improvement Project. 
So, um, Sixth Street uh, has uh, one of the highest concentrations of pedestrian collisions um, in the city. Um, it's part of the city's high injury network, uh, which is 12% of city streets, where 70% of the severe and fatal uh, collisions occur.